All right, so let's look here. Um, we've got a screen of settings. We've got all of these general writing, etc. We're not going to look at every screen, but I'm going to uh, direct your attention to a couple of places that are that are useful. Uh, so if we first look at settings general, uh, this is the place where you can change the name of your website. So when I first created the website, I called it Victor's Bakery. If you call it Victor's Bakery, that's fine, or you can call it anything else you want. That's the name that's going to appear on screen on the front end. Remember when we talked about this is the back end, this is the dashboard. And when you're in the front end, that's what that looks like. So if I wanted to change the name of the site, Victor's Bakery, to something else, that's where I can do it. And if you notice, there's a little tagline, there's a little slogan that it put for us automatically. Just another website, just another WordPress website. Well, we're not. We're, we're better than just another WordPress website. So if you want to, you can change the tagline here. But actually, let me give you a power user's tip right there. So regarding taglines and site titles, um, let's see, regarding site title and tagline, use these areas for SEO. What's SEO? Search engine optimization. What's search engine optimization? The art and the science and the magic of getting high results on search pages. Yes, which is often Google or Bing, Yahoo, whatever. I want to rank higher on the search engines. I want when people search for Italian food restaurant, uh, I want to appear higher. I want to be number one or I want to be on page one or whatever. I want to appear on those results. That's the art and the science and the magic of SEO. And I actually teach that on Fridays. Tomorrow is day two of um, the SEO class, 9.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. Um, I'm also recording the lectures if you can't quite make it. But uh, tomorrow is the SEO class. And so what I'm saying here, free tip, is if you've got a WordPress site, you have the ability right here on two little spots to start to do some SEO, some optimization. The way we do it exactly is use these boxes to add keywords of what your product is. There are more nuances than this, but I should say it more in complete sentences, not just a list of keywords. Victor's Bakery is all about selling cookies and cupcakes and birthday cakes and all of that, but I'm not going to just fill in those boxes. Birthday cake, comma, cookies, comma, affordable, comma. I'm not going to do that. I'm, just, I'm not going to put just basic keywords. I'm going to put complete sentences. So Victor's Bakery, um, just another tagline. Let's say I could put, you know, San Diego Bakery. OK, yes? Some uh, things don't show a tagline. Um, is it, should you still put that in? Does it show up in the code somewhere? Or it it shows up in the code, exactly. Some themes don't display it, but it's still in the code, and the search engines can still see it. Because we see the visuals, but the search engines also see the code. Yes. Is the site, line, uh, sorry, the site title also relevant to the SEO? Yes, I'm going to talk about that in a moment. So tagline here, I've got San Diego Bakery. This is OK. This is minimal. It's got the keyword San Diego and Bakery. OK, here's something that might be better. Uh, San Diego Bakery um, focused on healthy and organic treats. You know, whatever more keywords people might be searching for. There's bakeries all over San Diego. Well, I'm trying to get found because my baked goods are, are organic or, or, or vegan or healthy or whatever. Whatever differentiates me from uh, the competition. So I could say something like family-owned bakery in the heart of you know, uh, San Diego. Up on the site title, depending on the theme, you could also expand upon that. I could put Victor's Bakery and then the phone number. The problem there is that that is, um, that is going to show up oftentimes very visually. So here it would say Victor's Bakery plus the phone number, and it might look a little awkward there. 
there might be a different spot in the design, maybe in the top corner, to put the phone number. So the site title is um, should be pretty straightforward, the name of your business and such. You don't have to get that embellished because depending on your theme, it may show all of that text on screen somewhere awkwardly. Usually it's better to focus on the tagline to put all of these details about keywords, phone number, and such. Yes? What if, you, if you were saying sales and service, would you want to use an ampersand, the word and, or comma to separate? Uh, you can do um, either the, the word and spelled out or the ampersand. I would sort of lean toward the ampersand. Uh, just for the, the space of it and the readability. The search engines are smart enough nowadays to know that an ampersand is an and, and there isn't any special, um, special uh, you know, keyword uh, or any SEO juice that you get out of it from the, from the spelled out word versus the ampersand symbol. So that's the idea for the titles and taglines. You incomplete sentences. Uh, you can add basic contact info to the tagline. Contact info like phone number, address, you know, street address, if you're a real location. Even if your theme doesn't show the tagline, it's a good idea to use it. The search engines. can still see it and it can still help you that you've got text in there yeah so for the, that site title you're talking about using the and sign mm -hmm. would it be better to put, should you use a, a character code there or if it would be better just to use the answer? that's a good point um, either or they will get converted, right, if we do the ampersand code. Uh, hmm, I have to double check on that. The reason that it might not be that important is because the important words are, you know, what, what were we saying? Services and features. The important words are service and feature, not the word and. And is a stop word. It's, it's irrelevant to the search engines. So I don't think there's any importance to put it as the word spelled out as the ampersand symbol or as the ampersand code because it's just going to be anyway ignored. The important words are services and, and features. And this will be smart enough to translate if you do the code versus the symbol, it should translate it to the right symbol when it's online. Yes? And what's the best format to put the phone number in? Uh, doesn't quite matter because again here it's just kind of personal preference if you want to put it you know the way we've seen it this way or with you know doing dots doesn't matter because uh, a lot of times now the search engines or the mobile devices they can recognize oh here are ten digits or nine digits they must be a phone number so it will show up or be usable like a phone number so it's just for aesthetics the way you want it Okay, there was a question last time about how do we set ourselves up so that every hacker doesn't know that our website is at whatever dot, whatever slash wp dash admin. This is where you set it up right here. It is technical, and all I can do is just kind of guide us to the how to do it. But it's right here because this, if this was my real website, eventually up on the real internet, it would say that my address is right here, victorsbakery.com on both of these it would say that well one address is where do I log into WordPress and what's my website address for people to see the default if I've got it like this then my my address for uh, WP admin would be obvious right there that's the default well this is where we can set it up so that we can have something like that but it's not just simply changing this I'm, I'm saying don't change this right now you would need to read this right here, and this will explain how to fully set it up. But here's how to have a little bit more cybersecurity instead of having the default, you know, the front door to your website as whatever slash wp admin, you can set yourself up to have, you know, my login page slash 
WP dash admin. Yes. Uh, a lot of times, when uh, you're checking the searchability, like they have these programs that you see if you're Google friendly and all that. Mm -hmm. Why do they often come up better if you put www in them when nobody ever does that? No one, no one puts in www dot and then the web address, but that version of it seems to search better. Well, when you set up something like um, Google Analytics or Google Search Console, Google has a feature in their search engine where you can tell it which do you prefer. Do you prefer, do you prefer us with the www or without the www? The default because no one changes it or no one sets up Google Search Console is www. So uh, if you take the SEO class, we talk about that. We, we talk about how to change it and then how to um, make it be what makes more sense. Uh, because, yeah, no one types that anymore because the web browser does it for us. But um, the default is the www. Yes? Can you put any more than you want besides my login? Yeah. To make it up. Yeah. Does that affect your uh, URL? No, this one will still be what everyone sees, but then your login uh, for your dashboard will, will be here, and no one will see that unless they know that that's the link to your dashboard. So, so the it, only way to get that information would be the connection along to my website. Yeah, they need to know this address to get to that address. There's no way that this address will show up unless they know what the address is. And if you name it something that no one will know, then it'll be secret. So you type it on the website. Yes, exactly. On the browser, you type it like that, and that will take a while to do the Exactly. Yes, but I'm saying again, don't just change it and click save. Read the link, read the instructions here because it's not just making a change here. Don't just make a change and click save, you're gonna break your site. I'm telling you, this is where you would do it, but read this link to see how to fully set it up and it is a little technical because it has to be about a redirection. But this is where you would do it. So I'll put that in the notes here. Um, WordPress address URL. Yeah, once you know how it works, then you can flip the switch. For more security, you can change the user, uh, but read the documentation to set it up correctly. And I'll put the link that uh, it's giving us right here. So you're, you need to read that. I'll put it directly in our notes. Depending on how much we get far in the class and such, I might show you how it's done. But it's pretty technical, uh, but I'll just put it in there in case you want to read up on your own. Question? Um, I guess you just answered, but are we going to get into redirecting websites if we've got multiple domain names that we're all redirecting to the same place? Not quite, because those redirections you would do in your Word, in your GoDaddy or your Bluehost or wherever you bought them in the, hosting, in the hosting, in the hosting provider. It would be better to ask them, and they can often, over the phone, tech support guide you through it or do it for you if you do it that through them. So that's something that you do on your provider, on your hosting provider. Okay, so email address, that's obvious if I need to change my email. Do I want to create membership where anyone can register? Don't worry about this at the moment, but later on when we set up our e-commerce features, we will have the ability for people to create an account. So then it will be much easier for them to then buy a product in the future. Language of the site, you can change it there if you want. Oh, time zone, this one's a little bit off, so then everything that I upload to the site will have the wrong time zone. This is set to UTC 0. Where in the world is UTC 0? Greenwich Mean Time, London, England, basically. Last time I checked, this is not London. So we need to change this. You can either put your UTC offset, or you can put Los Angeles. Now there's lots and lots and lots of countries here and cities to choose from. So instead of trying to find Los Angeles, just click on that box one time and start typing LOS. And that should jump you to Los Angeles.
that's not bad that that's wrong, but the problem will be that when you upload a product at 3 p.m., it'll be, you know, seven hours different over on London time. Uh, that might not matter at all if people are visiting at a time that, you know, when they're visiting. You can change your date format and your time format if you want. Uh, these are the ones common in the US. You can change it to 24 hour time. You can change the date format to different country formats if you want. Week starts on whatever you want. And if you make any changes on this screen, you want to click Save. Yeah, all of these things that we're changing are being stored in the database. And in our case, it's the database here. But once this is on your provider, on GoDaddy, Bluehost, whatever, all of this gets changed or saved automatically to the database at your provider. Yes, that is normal. Uh, yeah, uh, it's not it's slated here explicitly. Maybe it should. But yes, if I were to then manually put up here wp-admin, yes, it will log me in even though I didn't say explicitly where. It's just that the default always is whatever the name of your site slash wp-admin. All right, let's go look at, okay, let's go look at reading. We're going to skip writing. We've got writing and reading. We don't have arithmetic, but we're going to look at, uh, we're going to look at writing, or sorry, reading. Let's look at reading. Um, there's a setting here that people ask all the time how to do this. We can't quite do it yet. We're going to come back to it. But notice here, your home page displays either your latest post or a static page. They should reword this a little bit to say, what would you like to display on your home page? Your latest blog post or a static page? The default in WordPress, it was originally set up as a way to create blogs. Blogs are articles that are published on a regular basis, like you know news articles. So usually on a blog, we want to see the latest article. I want to read the latest thing. So the default of all the WordPress installations is it's going to show the latest article, the latest post. Well, I don't want that. I want it to show a home page that always stays the same. Or I want it to show a certain page that I've set about here's today's specials. So this is where we change it, a static page. But for this to be fully set up, we then have to say, OK, the home page that will, that will be seen first will be this page. And we don't have any pages yet. We can't set it. And all our blog posts, all our news posts, where are they going to go? Well, we don't have a page for them yet. So we're going to come back to this once we've created pages. But this is how we can set a blog style website or a static home page style website. We can say general reading where you set a blog style site or static home page style site default is blog and you need pages first to switch to the other style we're going to create pages a little later then we can come back to the screen and set the home page and set the news screen. OK, blogs to show and syndication. Um, these are, uh, do you ever visit a website and then there's a few articles and then it says next page? 
that's setting it right here. How many do you want to show at a time until there's page two or three or, or so? And this is, there's no right or wrong answer to this. You could have it say, uh, show three posts, three news items, then page two. And then the next six, and then page three. Or uh, you can have it, you know, 99. Show everything on one screen. Um, there's no wrong answer here. Or nothing regarding SEO and such. Just whatever you want it to be. And same thing, when someone subscribes, that's syndication. When someone subscribes to your site, how many of the latest articles or news items do you want the person to see when they download your articles? 10 or 2 or 90. And how much... Um, to display the full text or just the summary. When they subscribe to your site and they want to keep up to date with your articles, how much uh, do you want to show them? The full article or just a summary of it? Do you have an idea perhaps maybe why we might put summary versus full text? Yeah, you could keep it more compact under summary and then they can click to expand to see more sure anything else if you're a static page mm -hmm. and um, say you wanted to be able to use like some sort of plugin or something to put reviews on your site would mm -hmm. this affect that no the plugins would be its own feature it wouldn't be a blog or you know a news item it would be separate so the plugin itself would most likely have the feature about how many or have the option about how many of so these Pretty much. Uh, no, uh, no, because once you set this as a static page, you're still going to put your posts somewhere on a news page. Well, that news page is still going to be governed here. How many blogs do I show in that oh, news page? A, sub page. a sub full, a sub sub screen. Right. So um, another reason to do yes. Mm, not 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 exactly SEO perhaps how you're thinking but what I was gonna say there is this is a way that if a person subscribes to you uh, you know they 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 get an email or a notification that there's a new article well if it only shows the summary of the article um, they then have incentive to click read more and come back to my site if I send them the whole thing, well, they're going to read it and not go to your site. I have no more incentive. I've read what I wanted. Putting it on summary gives them a little chunk, a little preview, and then they can read more and come back to your site. Yeah. It's going to be, uh, so where does it show that it's mobile friendly? That's going to depend on uh, the appearance of your theme. And most themes nowadays are mobile friendly because it's very passe not to have a mobile friendly site. I remember the transition in WordPress where the brand new hot themes were mobile friendly and everyone else wasn't. And they would really sell themselves mobile friendly. But now because it's actually kind of detrimental to SEO if you don't have a mobile friendly site, there's no developers and creators out there that are not doing a mobile friendly site because I don't want that one. It's going to hurt my SEO. Yeah. You, have to write the separate summary. you could if you want to. If you don't write a separate summary, it'll take the first couple of sentences from the article. But when we write an article, we will see we've got a box where we can also create our own separate summary. That's why I'm putting SEO. Um, yeah, thinking in those lines makes sense. Uh, but when we create the actual posts, we will see the, the nuances. And lastly, here's the spot where once we go live on the real internet, we want to turn this off. Or else we'll be invisible to the search engines, perhaps, and then we won't get found, and we won't get traffic, we won't make money, and we'll go bankrupt. So we want to turn this off eventually. And if you made any changes, you can click OK. I didn't really make any changes. I'm just going to move on to discussion. Let's go look at discussion over here. There's a lot of items here, but I'm only going to mention a couple. Um, here is uh, one of them. Default article settings. Now, they don't quite explain it unless you know this. We've talked about 
pages and posts. But here it's mentioning article. Article is the term for both of them collectively. A page or a post, technically for WordPress, they're both articles. Even though one is post, one is page. And obviously, I also a moment ago said our blog articles. It's such a generic word that they used. Default settings for posts and pages. Allow people to post comments on new articles. The default is on. So people, when you write a new page or a new post, people can comment on it. Just like other websites or blogs that you've seen, people can reply to the post. That could be useful for building a community and SEO and uh, you know customer service and such. But it could also be that it could invite spammers to um, write spam comments on your on your site. So if you turn that off, then people won't be able to write comments. Spammers won't be able to spam you. Yes. Are these global settings that we're changing now that affect the entire website and can be changed per page if you wanted certain pages to have these rights, or is it just global and that's it? It's uh, it's both. Right now, turning it off says these settings may be overridden for individual articles. So turning it off right here will say on all new articles that I create from now on, we'll get these settings where spammers can't spam on my page. However, articles that I previously had will not be retroactively deactivated, no comments. So if I had already created an about page, a comments page, a contact page, all of that, but I had this on that whole time, people could comment and spam on that page. After I turn it off and I create a brand new page, shopping cart, then shopping cart will not have comments and future pages. So what I'm getting at here is um, this does it globally, yes, but we can set the settings for individual pages. We'll see how a little later. But it might be more useful to instead also leave on allow comments, uh, but then click on here. Before a comment appears, comment must be manually approved. So my recommendation, this is a little bit more regarding um, social media and SEO. You can run social media or digital marketing as a monologue or a dialogue. What does monologue mean? Monologue one voice dialogue many voices monologue you are talking at your customers uh, well more than one at least yes so many voices more than two voices more than one voice uh, you are talking with your customers see the difference here talking at your customers with your customers meaning you're publishing content but you're never replying to them you're never letting them reply you're not letting a dialogue happen so you can run your website you can run social media as a monologue or a dialogue when I talk uh, when I teach this in the social media class let's uh, couch it in the terms of Facebook I post something on my business's Facebook page I post uh, sale this Saturday uh, use this coupon code XYZ123 for 10% off. So let's say I post something on Facebook and then people reply and they say that looks that looks great. Where where are you located at? And I don't reply. I lost a customer. Let's say I post some photos uh, and people reply and comment, oh that looks really tasty. Um, you know, uh, uh, I'm enticed by it. And I don't reply. You know, I'm becoming I'm doing the monologue. I'm not replying to the customers. I'm not doing customer service. I'm not uh, showing them that I am a real company with real people. I'm like some uh, you know, faceless organization. 
with a dialogue allowing people to comment and then I reply to people's comments and I create a relationship uh, many will tell you that in the world of business you know it's about the relationships your product is important but it's the relationships uh, these customers that you get and that you hold on to and that you nurture for years they're the ones that keep coming back and buying and being your customers all of that uh, fancy talk is to say here again uh, if you turn off the ability for people to comment you're going to the monologue you're not letting the you know social aspects of marketing happen for fear that I'm gonna get my site spammed if you leave that on and then turn on uh, comment must be manually approved you you sort of fix that in that no spam comments will appear uh, no off-topic comments will appear unless I approve it so I would recommend this one yeah can you say that a little louder? How quickly should you be approving those comments? It would be part of the lobby. You just know that there might be there, so you're going to be in there. If you're a popular site and you're getting lots of comments, uh, it may be some extra work that you're doing. But I would try to uh, approve those comments as soon as possible. And notice here it says that you will get emailed whenever there's mo uh, comments to moderate. I would just handle it as soon as possible. Recommendation set moderation on. But now you have an extra task of moderating comments. But it could help your traffic and SEO and such. I cannot guarantee that you do these things and you will always get results. If my company were hired uh, for SEO and marketing and such, we, we don't, we tell them right away and we, we say we cannot guarantee you will get results in a week or a month or whatever. There are many factors. You have to engage in competitor analysis, you have to have a marketing strategy, you have to set up long tail keywords, you have to monitor your, your traffic and such, Google Analytics. So there should no reputable SEO company should be uh, guaranteeing that in a month you'll be number one on Google, or in two weeks, or in a year. It really depends on many factors. Maybe there's too much competition in this space. I am yet another, you know, daycare center trying to get top results. I'm yet another restaurant. I'm yet another Italian food restaurant. I'm yet another Italian food restaurant in Hillcrest. You know, I'm yet another one. So um, all, these, all these little things that we try to do to rank higher on the search results, that's SEO. And that's why I said the art and the science and the magic of it, because sometimes you try your hardest and it doesn't work. Sometimes you t try minimally and it does work. It's just a lot of factors. From this screen, this is the only one that I would really think about to change, either just turn off all comments, um, or if you leave it on, turn on approved. Mm -hmm. What does the allow link notifications for the bots mean? WordPress has the ability to sort of communicate with other WordPress sites. One WordPress site communicates with another WordPress site. This is turned on, so what's happening here is if someone from their site links to your site, you get a notification over here in the let's see where do they put it in the in the comments section you will get a notification that another WordPress site linked to your site uh, the opposite is also true if you your website you link to someone else's website and they're a WordPress site they will get a not notification here that your website linked to their site the purpose of that is a little bit more complex than we can talk about at the moment, but that's regarding SEO and creating backlinks and traffic and such. That is what's called a backlink. Mm -hmm. okay. These are backlinks, a link back to your site. But it's a little more complex than we need to get at the moment. So that was the discussion page. I'm going to save. I made a couple of changes. 
Don't worry about it at the moment. Mm -hmm. Let's look at one more thing here, permalinks. Now in the beginning, WordPress used to have a setting here that was very bad, and then they eventually changed it to be a lot better. So let me show you what I mean here. Permalinks. The link structure of your site. Bad. Good. Bad is victorsbakery.com slash p equals 99. Good is victorsbakery.com slash contact. The default of WordPress used to be that your links were simply the number of the item in the database. And that was very bad for SEO because this is irrelevant. If you were to take this out of context and look at it right here, what is this linking to? Is it a page? Is it a product? I don't know at all. 99, that makes no sense. But if you look at this, well, that's obviously linking to a contact page. Or maybe it's called, you know, contact us. Or contact us. Or contact us. Or contact that HTML or whatever. Uh, this is what you want for SEO. You want addresses with real words for SEO. You want URLs with real words. Those are keywords to help you get found. And when I talk about help you get found, that's with a Google search or a Yahoo search or whatever. Um, so I've, I've seen the evolution of WordPress, and I've taught this class for a while. And the default used to be the, the very first option there, which is plain, which is the one that's terrible. My default links in my site are p equals whatever, gibberish. Anything else besides plain or numeric is good. So numeric is the same thing, but slightly different. How would you know um, what in your site you used to underscore or not? Could it be like contact us? Could it be a space? Or would it always be an underscore like a lot of web stuff? Uh, I can't answer that. It was depending how the site was made. Uh, you could see that when you see your pages, and we'll get to this a little later, but once you edit your page, you will see what it is once you edit the page. <clears throat> now for us right here, as I said, anything besides plain or numeric will work. Um, the day and name, I'm still not liking that one very much because it might make your, your addresses a little too long. It's going to put the date and such when you created that page. You might not really need that. I usually recommend the post name to be the best one because it's just going to be the name of the article or the page, the name of the screen. And again, imagine that this right here is victorsbakery.com slash post name. victorsbakery.com slash 2018 slash 5 slash 11 about. And I think that's too much. Yes? Can you just give a brief definition of the permalink? Well, that's everything that I'm saying here. The permalink is the address. The permalink What's is the purpose of it? every address. Every uh, every page on the internet needs an address. So you've every got every page is the permalink. Every no. page has a permalink. Every page has a permalink. Yes, yeah, some link on on the website that that is a permanent link to the website. And this is global in this particular field that we're doing now. Yes, this affects every page, every screen on your whole site. Would you want it to be the contact page or the home page? What would be the better preference? Well, again, the one that I recommend for all of this is the post name. That one will, um, if you've got a contact page, when you create, when we create pages later, when we create a page, we're going to call it contact us, or contact me, or contact. That name is what will be appearing in the URL, in the, in the permalink, in the address. If I create an article called How to Bake Cookies, 
the title of that article, How to Bake Cookies, will be victorsbakery.com slash how dash to dash bake dash cookies. So the title of a page or a post is what is being set here in this permalink. Um, so the how to bake cookies at victorsbakery.com. It would be victorsbakery.com slash how to bake cookies. This is the format of how you would like your addresses to appear. Do you want them to, just one moment? Do you want them to appear as a number? Do you want them to appear as real words? Do you want to appear with the date? So it's just how would you like your links to your pages on your site to appear? The short answer, if it doesn't quite still make sense, the short answer is post name, the end. Click save. But does, but does that make sense? It, it does. I, I just had to understand the post name is any page within your website that you've named. Yeah. That's right. And so it auto it helps it figure out what to do that's not a number and got it. Yeah, so that it's not a number, it's a real name yeah. of what you've named it. And you populate that. Mm -hmm. When we create pages and posts, we will see exactly how that works. Yes. So you have a picture of, on, on Instagram or something of the cookie and say for restaurant click here. That's the information that the viewers are being sent to have the names of the recipe. Yeah, these these links are the link to your website. So if you if you're gonna make a tweet and you say yeah, click here to buy the cookie, uh, the the address is come from this format. And the address people would see victorsbakery.com slash buy a cookie instead of victorsbakery.com slash one two three. What does that mean? Where are they taking me? <clears throat> yes. Um, so you had in your like, bakery page, you had a page called recipes. Mm -hmm. Could you um, would it be helpful for SEO to uh, say like in in to be able to modify the title. To the yes. Like yes. Yeah. Yes. We will. Exactly. And that and that is a good way to do it. When when we do it, we will see. We can create a, we can create a page called uh, cookies. Yes. But it might be better to create you know best chocolate chip cookies. Uh, and we will be able to change that however we want. This is just the scheme. This is just the format of how it will look. But yes, you're thinking one step ahead. I want to also SEO optimize the, the addresses, and we will talk about that. But this is just to set up our scheme. And the only thing is, any of these will work except plain, but I recommend posting. Not custom. Not custom. That's too complex. Posting. So, recommendation use post name this mm -hmm. this will show the keywords of your title in the URL and can be modified So this, uh, this again, this is meaningful because the search engines are going to analyze your site. And if you've got real words, real keywords within the address, the search engine can better understand your site and catalog it. And when someone searches these keywords, yours has a better chance of being found. Older uh, WordPress sites that had the old scheme, well, they're at a disadvantage because they never changed it the default was just numbers then the then the search engine doesn't know by that piece of information what's on that page it's just numbers so the more of these SEO things that you do the better everything else here is a little advanced you don't quite need it so I just changed to post name and then we'll click save So I didn't go into all of these settings, that's okay, you can explore them on your own, but also notice on the top right corner of most of these pages we have help. If I didn't mention something, you've got help on the corner, and here you can go 
get some context sensitive help, meaning this changes depending what screen you're looking at. Some quick definition overview and quick information about what the settings are and custom structure. Or you can go to the official documentation, the full documentation of what permalinks are, using them effectively, and the forums where you can go ask for help with other from other WordPress pros. Every screen has that. Yeah. On the bottom of that uh, link page right there, if you go scroll all the way down to the bottom, it's, there's an optional section. Would you actually recommend putting categories on there? No, this is a little this is a little advanced that it's not as useful as it might seem. Um, this is to create a certain address or permalink structure where you have certain keywords always visible it's not really necessary anymore because most websites nowadays are, are not just like one topic there are many related topics so if you force your addresses to always have a certain keyword it could be detrimental to you because then the search engine doesn't understand fully about what your whole site is so that's why they're optional and I really don't recommend to do much in that optional section So let's do one activity here, then we'll take a break. Let's go to our posts screen. Click on posts. To get practice in creating an article from this post screen, we currently have one blog post. I want to create a brand new blog post. So how do you think you do that from this screen? Add new right there. Every many many screens have an add new button, but it changes per screen. If I'm in the pages screen, it'll say pages add new. So here we're going to create a new post, a new blog post. Go ahead and click add new. Add new post title and then content. We'll say here this doesn't relate to um, this doesn't exactly relate to the content of Victor's Bakery. You could if you want to put this, it's just practice. But let's type something like day two of WordPress. Let day two of the WordPress class. Whatever. I'm going to type the title. The title of this post, the title of this article is this. Type something and then click in the main editor right here. So type it, then click something like we're about to type. After you click here, you will see, here's your permalink. The link to this page is victorsbakery.com slash day two of the WordPress class. It dashes as the default. If I want the permalink to be something different than what my default that I wrote here, I have the button right here, edit, and I can call it anything else. WordPress, the best WordPress class, let's say. So it, uh, every page and post and product, when we get to products, based on their title, will have a certain permalink. When you type it and then click outside of it, it'll appear. It doesn't appear until you type something and then click something outside. But after you type something, it'll tell you, there's your permalink based on what you wrote. You can then customize it however you want. And this is the spot here where, again, if it makes sense to change what you wrote up there for different keywords, you could. But usually, I'm going to write the title to be the relevant keywords and sentences so that it automatically writes it for me so I don't have to write it twice. I'm going to write up here, the best WordPress class. Now, because I already did it one time and clicked somewhere else, it doesn't then update. So I would need to edit it, or I can um, trash it, or refresh and try again. Right, you can refresh the screen, try again, don't save it. But to save yourself some effort, you, you should be writing titles here that have the keywords that will go into your address to help you get found. We're not 
going to worry about that too much right now, just for a little practice here. WordPress day two. Depending on your browser, my browser has up here this little spinning refresh or reload button. And so when I When I click then over here, I get the permalink, and then I get the main editor. Maybe I wanted to say WordPress Day 2, the number 2, in the visible title, but maybe I wanted to say WordPress Day 2, the word. There should be no difference regarding SEO. But if I wanted to change it like that, I could. Do you have to establish a page for posts? Or, uh, because, uh, because we didn't change settings reading, I left reading the same as the latest post will appear automatically on the home page. I don't have to. But if I were, and were eventually going to, change it to say the home page shows something then we would need to create a post page a little later, and then the post will exist there. Yeah. Huh? I, I don't quite get it. Can you say that? Say that again. If, if you're going to put your posts on the home page, mm -hmm. that home page cannot be static. Because it's, going to it's, it's either or. The default right now is posts on the home page. If I change it to something else, posts will not appear on the home page. It's either or. But then I have to say posts will then appear on my posts screen once I create a posts screen. Right now there's no place to set these two, so we haven't changed it yet. But it's either or. Show your posts or show a static. There is one kind of in the middle, a hybrid style, which we'll get to a little later. Theme it's theme-based, yeah. So just for a little practice before we take our next break here, um, we can write, say, uh, today I learned. And we've got bullet points. You can write some bullet points. And I also learned, and you can write some stuff and then practice with you know, making it bold. You can write something else. Follow this link. And then I can... I'm not writing anything real, of course. I'm just showing you. I'm writing stuff. I've got a few basic options here. Bolding italics, bullet points. Uh, what is this, what is this paper-looking clip thing? It's a link. It's a chain to insert a link. So if I wanted to make yahoo.com actually clickable, I'd have to select it. I'd have to click Insert Link. And then right here, when someone clicks on that address, it will go to yahoo.com. I have to select the text and then turn on this link. Add it. And then now, well, I forgot to include the H, but that will be clickable. I made a mistake. Uh, I'd like to undo it. I don't see an undo button. Actually, it's hidden right here. There are also a few extra editing options. This very last one here, toggle toolbar, when you turn on that last option, you get your undo and your redo. You get a couple of other things as well. Tabbing, special characters. So if you wanted to include you know, some symbols here, I have basic ability here also, text color. Strike through. Now, the WordPress has this basic text editor built in. Later when we talk about plugins, we can add more text editing features. Like I want to make columns, 
I want to put, you know, a picture and text around the picture. The basic editor is is very basic. It's not that powerful. With plugins, later on we can make it more powerful. So play with this for a moment. Um, and there's a bunch of other boxes we'll talk about later. But on the top right corner, then we have save the draft so that it's not visible to the world yet. I can click preview so that I can see what would it look like if I were to publish it. It opens a new window. It then shows it to you within the design of your site. That's preview. And then when you click publish, it goes out publish for everyone to see. If this was out on the real internet, victorsbakery.com, it would show up to anyone if they saw it. But because we're in WAMP server, no one can see it except on your computer. So play with this for a moment. If you like how it turned out, click Publish. And then you can go to your front end. And then we'll take a break. So try to see if you can publish another post. So I did it a bit quickly, but try it yourself. Again, we're in a development environment. There's, uh, there's no harm, no foul. No one's going to see this. You can make mistakes. You can learn from it. Um, so try to publish a post. Take a break. We'll be back in 10 minutes. 8.05. Yes? So for example, this preview says May 10th by Adam. 